हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल जेडीज गाइडेंस द टॉपिक ऑफ टुडे डिस्कशन इज सरफेजी वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू डिस्कस द एंटायर एक्ट बट आई विल जस्ट गिव यू एन ओवरव्यू अबाउट व्हाट इज दिस सरफेजी ऑल अबाउट नाउ लेट्स ट्रेस बैक वी हैव सीन द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ नॉन परफॉर्मिंग एसेट इन द प्रीवियस वीडियोज वी हैव ऑल्सो सीन द अदर रिलेटेड कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ एनपीए नाउ यू नो एनपीए in a very uh, simplest sense is nothing but the problem of recovery of loans that the banks face now if in our daily life if we have given loan to someone okay and that person does not return us back what we can do if the loan is been given uh, in a formal way like it is there, there is an agreement or there is a document which evidences that the, i have given loan to someone xyz and if xyz do not pay me back the money of course i can sue him to the court of law now the same thing applies to the banks also when the banks have not recovered the amount that was advanced to the people it may be people individuals or maybe companies so bank has the option that it it may sue but you know what was the phenomenon going on before the surfacey the banks had to appeal to the civil courts okay prior to 1993 the banks were appealing to the civil court and uh, you know the condition of uh, the cases that run pending over years and years and uh, the banks those accounts which were classified as npas and against which the co- cases are pending in the civil court it took a very hard time for banks to get back the money so in the year 1993 one act was enacted that is known as recovery of debts due to banks and financial institutions now what was the uniqueness in this act so let me repeat what i said before the enactment of this act which i told recovery of debts due to banks and financial institutions whatever was the npa of the banks the banks had to appeal to the civil courts and civil courts deal with a variety of problems not just the problem of npa of the banks and therefore the uh, it took a long time to get the ultimate decisions of the court and bank had to suffer a lot of loss within that time frame now then came this act which i named as recovery of debts due to banks and financial institutions in the year 1993 the uniqueness about this act was that it had brought into the picture two uh i mean to say two court you can call it as a court so one is the debt recovery tribunal and another is the debt recovery appellate tribunal so drt and drat so the bank can hold uh, like any cases of pending advances like the npas the the, the decisions on these uh, accounts would be taken care of in the drt and drat drt and drat is just like high court and supreme court so any decision of drt can be appealed to the higher uh, tribunal that is drat so i will not go into the details of drt and drat this is just for information that prior to surfacing the banks had to go to the i mean they used to organize this drt hold this drt and drat in my uh, other videos i will uh, bring this drt and drat into the picture now again uh, let me tell you the drt and drat there was a time frame which was given that 180 time frame within this the decision has to be given by drt and drat about the pending cases of recovery but again drt had to deal with a number of cases of npas of a great number of banks a large number of banks and there also it was taking a lot of time okay so before this act also the bank had to suffer because the in the civil court the cases run for years and years and even in case of drt and drat also which is a specialized tribunal set to look into the cases of npas but even then 180 within 180 days decisions were not coming so then one act was enacted in the year 2002 we call it surfacey from here we are going to discuss about surfacey now when i when we hear the term surfacey we are really very confused what it is all about so let me first tell you the full form of surfacey okay so surfacey stands for securitization and reconstruction of financial assets 
and enforcement of security interest let me repeat again securitization and reconstruction of financial assets and enforcement of security interest so it is a very big i mean the full form is quite very big and difficult at times to remember also but uh, let me just tell you there are some terms that has come out okay first term that we hear is securitization okay second term that we hear is the reconstruction of financial assets and the third term that we hear is the enforcement of security interest so let us split this surface into three parts one is the securitization of financial assets the second is the reconstruction of financial assets and the last one is enforcement of security interest okay so in this video i'm going to talk about these three things what does it mean and if you understand these three things you have understood what is surface all about now let's talk about securitization as the as in the full form the first thing that is uh, coming is securitization and reconstruction of financial assets and enforcement of security interest we'll talk about enforcement later let us first concentrate on securitization and reconstruction of financial assets okay so first thing that we have to understand is what is securitization so for securitization again uh, a separate video is there but even then in my video here also i'm going to discuss with you what is securitization very interesting please stay with me now what happens when the banks have given you know banks are taking public money in the form of deposits and it is giving us loan now out of these many loans that the bank gives some are those loans which turn out to be non performing where the bank faces the problem of recovery but remember there are some, some not sometimes most often the bank gives loan against some security okay we all know that banks uh, very often give loans against some security it may be movable it may be immovable okay so suppose i go to a bank and take some loan and against that loan i have has security maybe my house or maybe my some property okay so i have given to the bank the security so like me there are many borrowers who go to bank and take loan against some security so remember when i have given my house as a security bank is not taking the house rather it is just having the document the possession the property not possession the property uh, title okay so that is a security and it is there in the bank's file okay in the bank's file it has the uh, the security that the borrower has uh the deposited or not deposited like borrower has claimed or has uh, given as a security to take loan okay so like me there are many borrowers who have gone to bank and have taken loan and have given some security okay again some security the bank has given loan now in course of time the bank may suffer two things first thing is that the bank may suffer the problem of non performing assets okay that means the loan that you me and we all had gone to the bank to take we are not returning okay people at uh, the banks are not getting the the bank is not getting the money back from us and our account is now classified as non performing this is one problem the bank is facing the second problem could be that when the banks are giving or the bank is giving so many loans its liquidity is uh, in crisis okay bank has given so much of loan now if more people come and take loan the bank will find difficulty to finance those loan because already there are many borrowers who have already taken the loans so two things again first thing is that some loans may become npa and there are cases where the bank may suffer liquidity crisis because a lot of loan is been given and a bank is not having the ready cash to give further loan now what can the bank do let's we think that the bank is suffering from the problem of npa because it has given loan to many people though it has taken security but it is facing the problem of npa okay now what the bank can do is that bank can since in the file the bank's file there are a lot of documents which which uh, which have which relates to the security that the borrower has given okay the borrower has given to the bank for for taking loan so all these securities the bank is going to pull together okay bank will bring it together and then it will sell the securities to a agency we call it special purpose vehicle or special purpose entity 
and this special purpose entity we call it as asset reconstruction companies mane asset reconstruction companies are type of special purpose vehicles or special purpose entity so what the bank is doing bank is selling off all its securities to this uh, special purpose entity or special purpose uh, vehicle okay now why will this special purpose vehicle buy this first thing i would tell you that suppose i have 1 crores worth of security this security is nothing but as you me and other borrowers we have gone to the bank and have taken loan against those securities so the bank has all the files and uh, they have pulled the files together and have sold to the special purpose entity now suppose there is total value of the securities 1 crore now what this uh, special purpose entity will do the first thing is that it will buy it at a discount so 1 crores of loan it will or not loan 1 crores worth of security the special purpose entity is going to buy it for a discount maybe it will buy it for 1 crore so it may buy it for 95 lakhs okay it is getting security worth 1 crore but it is paying 95 lakhs this is one thing now what this special purpose entity will do the special purpose entity will do what you know now it has got the uh, possession of all the securities what the special purpose entity would do it will start issuing some marketable securities to the investors to the public to the investors okay that can be in the form of bonds okay marketable security may be in the form of bonds it may start issuing to the public at large right now when it is issued to the public at large public will come forward and would like to buy the bonds and why will public buy these bonds because these bonds are backed by the security okay the security which the special purpose entity has bought it from the banks or other financial institutions right so people will come like uh, investors xyz will come forward they will buy the bonds okay and uh, pay money because when you buy bonds you have to pay the money to the special purpose entity and why i am buying the bonds because i feel that i will get returns out of it and that return is very secure because it is backed by the security the special purpose entity already has the possession of the security so my money will not go into waste so i will definitely get some returns and moreover moreover investors are more secured because the securities that the special purpose entity has acquired they get the credit ratings okay so the pool of security that the special purpose entity has acquired they will make ratings okay so which uh, out of the securities which we have which of the securities are having least risk which is having moderate risk which is having the higher risk so being a investor i would know that this is the security uh, this is the bond i am buying uh, it is rated as triple a or double a or single a so depending on the riskiness i will put my money i will get more returns for those bonds which are highly risky and vice versa so here people are giving money to special purpose entity and special purpose entity has got the money as against the security of the security which he has okay so now special purpose entity gets money okay like uh, special purpose entity like uh, asset reconstruction companies they get money this money they can use to pay off the banks okay so i told you that it bought the uh, securities at a discount so 95 lakhs it bought it for so uh, this 95 lakhs at the time of buying it will pay 25% and the remaining 75% would be paid by getting the subscription to the bonds okay so what is happening here the special purpose entity is getting money from the market by way of issue of marketable securities backed by the security that the special purpose entity got from the bank right and it is making payment to the bank so this way the benefit is there for all the parties let's understand how because bank is benefited because if it would not have sold this assets to the special purpose entity then this bank would have got the money blocked okay people had taken they are not repay me repaying it is affecting their liquidity but since it has sold it to the special purpose entity so it is getting rid of that liquidity crisis and it is getting some money on spot and some money in some subsequent period of time from the special purpose entity there is benefit for the special purpose entity also because special purpose entity is getting the uh, security worth 1 crore at 95 lakhs okay so this is one benefit to the special purpose entity and uh, to the bond holders to the investors it is 
beneficial because you are buying the securities which are highly safe okay you are assured of some guaranteed returns and this is how the process of securitization works out okay so this is what i explained about securitization okay and um, and this is how the banks are going to clean their balance sheet okay when the bank has a lot of stressed assets the bank generally sell off those assets to asset reconstruction company and uh, this asset reconstruction company is going to issue some securities against those securities okay which it get got from the bank right so this is the process of securitization okay but i explained you what is securitization but i have not explained you what is surface all about i just gave you an introduction that before the introduction of surface there were some problems because the banks had to wait a long time for, wait for a long time to get the recovery of their dues uh, either appealing to the civil court or again after 1993 to the drts and drats and with surface something has changed now let's understand now i gave you the concept of securitization and how the assets are reconstructed or restructured in the bank's balance sheet now comes what is enforcement of security interest now let's go back to the history that we have discussed the drt and drat they although they have mentioned 180 days times to resolve the npa uh, cases but practically it never happens because drts and drats already they have a long number of pending cases of npas surface has come as some such mechanism where it has given two it has got two characteristics one is that it has given a lot of power to the bank okay and second thing is that this process goes without any intervention of court okay nothing happens through court the bank is given a lot of power now what happens under this surface regarding the recovery of npas now what happens since i have taken loan given some security like me many borrowers have taken loan and given some security now under surface what will happen is that the bank okay the bank when it finds that the asset has become non performing the bank will do what you know bank will serve a notice of 60 days so i would like to tell you that npa is a advance which has already delayed 90 days because after 90 days delay only we classify it as a non performing asset so what the bank will do bank will serve a notice to the borrower for 60 days okay why it is serving a notice it is serving the notice saying that your dues are there overdues are there please clear it otherwise we will attach the property or the security against which you have taken the loan okay so now this 60 days notice has been served to the borrower now what the borrower can do the borrower can make a negotiation within 15 days so 60 days notice have come bank has already notified that within 60 days you must have to come and clear your dues otherwise we are going to attach the property we are going to seize the uh, prosecutory whatever you have given for taking the loan now what the borrower can do the borrower can what the borrower can do the borrower can negotiate with the banks within 15 days okay it can come to the bank and will say please give me some time my condition is not very good now but uh, okay i give some amount now or some kind of negotiations may go on but if that negotiation is not successful and the bank finds no reason for which the borrower has to be excused then the borrower can within 45 days remember 60 days notice has been given within 15 days it can go to the bank and negotiate if negotiate is not a successful uh, activity then what the borrower can do borrower can move on to the drt and drat okay as i have told you already before surface there were already drt and now also we have drts and drats now they can go to the drt okay now it can appeal to the drt that uh, this is the bank and on uh, against which i have taken a loan and this much is pending and now what notice of 60 days has been served drt can give a stay order means drt can direct the bank that give him some more time his case is genuine and uh, such uh, it can take a stay order for those uh, the against the notice which the bank has served to the borrower but if drt also do not give a favorable uh, judgment or drt also does not come up with a favorable uh, uh, i mean to say uh, something some decisions which is at the favor of the borrower then what the borrower will do 
the borrower can after the decision of drt can within 30 days appeal to the drat okay that means debt recovery appellate tribunal it can appeal to that but there is a condition before you go to drat the drat requires the borrower to submit or deposit at least 50 percent of the outstanding balance whatever loan is outstanding against you you have to deposit 50 percent then only you can go to the drat okay now if the drat's decision is all right and is at the favor of the borrower then he would get a stay otherwise the bank will start doing its job okay suppose that drat's decision is not favorable and uh, the borrower is supposed to repay the bank within 60 days now the borrower has no other option now the bank will have to come into action what the bank will do bank will now try to possess the property or the security against which the loan is been taken right now this also bank do not do instantly bank again gives a notice of 30 days that we are now going to uh, uh, seize your property or take possession of the property okay so a 30 days notice will be given now uh, what the bank can do the bank can either take the possession of the property okay it can take the possession it becomes the owner of the owner of the property or it may sell off the property okay sell off the security as we have seen in case of uh, in case of securitization it is selling off the security or it may lease the security suppose it was a car it was the security was a uh, was a land so bank may lease it why bank will do so because after leasing it will get some income which may be used to cover the loss that has emerged due to non-performing assets so what the bank can do bank can either sell the asset possess the asset or lease the asset asset means the security okay so bank can do that now when it comes to selling the asset selling the security there are some formalities okay there are some formalities the bank has to abide by the first thing that you have to remember is that the bank has to circulate this information about the sale of the security uh, widely how can it do so the bank has to circulate it by way of a newspaper okay so as per the surface act 2002 the bank has to advertise it in a newspaper which must be in two newspapers one should be in english and one should be in the regional language in uh, in which uh, like depending on where the branch of the bank is located right so if it is in uh, if it is in west bengal so it has to be in bengali as well as in english one should be in english the other should be in the regional language right so it has to give a circulation in the newspaper and this selling of asset takes place through bidding system also where tenders and quotations are invited and uh, tenders are placed and quotations are invited and competitive and uh, through bidding process the sale takes place right now uh, so what I said that the bank can possess the property, can sell the property or can give the property on lease so that it can, uh, it can at least get some money back and can be used to uh, write off or it can be used to adjust against the losses that it has uh, incurred due to the non-performing assets. But sometimes what happens, you know, the security against which the loan is been taken is not something which can be sold or which can be uh, leased or which can be possessed. For example, sometimes um, in businesses, what happens? Uh, the loan is been taken taken against the security of the stock. Okay, stock. You must have seen in some shops they write the stocks are hypothecated to this and that bank. So that means the it is now hypothecation. It is a case of hypothecation. Now the bank cannot take all the stocks. Bank cannot lease the stocks. Nor the bank can possess the stock. What will bank do with the stocks? So in that case, what the bank will do? Bank will take over the management of that business okay bank will take over the management of the business so two alternatives what the bank will do bank will try to seize the security and uh, for seizing what they, it can do it can either use the security and possess it or it may sell it or it may lease it but if the security is of such nature that you cannot sell it you cannot lease it or you cannot um, use it uh, it may be in case of stock hypothecation like uh, some of the shopkeepers they take loan against the security of the stock so in that case the bank can take over the management of that business 
okay it will take over the management of the business and run the business as it likes and at the end whatever profit comes it will take the profit in order to adjust against the losses that has incurred due to npa and once the bank finds that i have taken the bank has taken a lot of profit and now it has recovered all the npas then it will take uh, i mean uh, transfer back the ownership and the management to the uh, uh, borrower okay now the last option another option is there the bank can also make another person appoint a person to look after the management of that business so these are some of the alternatives by which the bank is going to uh, enforce its security interest okay now after the property has been sold through bidding or quotations or tenders or whatever uh, through i mean uh, through a tenders inviting uh, quotations now what will happen is that there may be some people some person or individuals or firms or companies who is ready to buy the security now the bank will sell the security and at the time of selling the security it has to get 15% of the uh, i'm sorry 25% of the money on spot and remaining 75 has to be repaid by the purchaser within 15 days to the bank so what i'm saying i'm saying that once the property has been sold the buyer of the property property means the security has to pay instant 25% and the remaining 75% it has to pay to the bank within 15 days so this is the way the bank is enforcing a security interest and getting back the money uh, that has been locked up as non performing assets right so um, i would like to tell you certain things that surface easy is applicable only for those advances which is having a value of 1 lakh and more okay uh, non performing assets uh, amounting to rupees 1 lakh and more this is one thing second thing surface easy is not applicable to agricultural loan okay and the third thing that i would like to say is that the outstanding balance should be at least 20% and more if any person has outstanding less than 20% surface easy do not apply okay so this is just an explanation of surface easy so when i told you about the selling of asset i told that the bank is going to sell the asset possess the asset or it may uh, uh, lease the asset or it may take over the management of the business of the borrower or it may appoint someone to manage the business of the borrowers now if bank fails to do any of the things bank fails on its account to sell the assets or the security then in that case what the bank can do you know bank can go for securitization it may sell off the securities to an asset reconstruction company and the process i have already mentioned at the beginning so this is about the surface act 2002 and at the end i would like to just uh, add one more information that our recent budget of 2021 finance budget there our honorable finance minister has proposed the setting up of bad banks now what is a bad bank bad bank is nothing but it is like the asset reconstruction company so what is this asset reconstruction company you know now by but why it is called bad bank it is called a bad bank because it is dealing with bad loans okay the loans which has turned out to be npa it is dealing with that so the government wants that there should be the bad bank set up and this bad bank will do what they will pool all the npas of all the banks okay it will pool all the securities okay against all the npas of all the banks and then it will float marketable securities in the market and and the entire phenomenon now you know already you may revise this by going through the video once again and i'm sure you will get the nitigity of the entire process of surface act 2002 so is it isn't it very interesting is it not a of the i mean uh, if you dwell into it you will see the entire transformation from the civil code to drt to drat and now to surface okay and surface has really helped the banks to solve because bank is now empowered it can seize the property it can lease the property so this is how surface has been uh, this is the objective with which the surface has been enacted so i hope you like this video please like the video share the video and subscribe to my channel and i will bring forward many more interesting topics on banking thank you